we're going to look at what drag and drop might look like in Remix. Uh, you'll definitely want to watch the previous two videos that kind of lead up to this, optimistic updates and then uh, optimistic add. Um, so that, because I'm not going to be going into a lot of details about the previous code. And we're going to see some APIs here that, um, that were already covered there. So this is the card, right here is the card component. When we're looking here in this uh, user interface, so I can click and drag these, I get those red lines and I can drop them and put them other places. So let's, let's just review the code, just kind of the normal React stuff and a little bit of Remix stuff. And then we'll get into the optimistic part, which is what makes a drag and drop interface work really well. Um, so I've got this little bit of state on each card uh, to accept a drop, either none, top, or bottom. And you can see we've got the, let me, I gotta scroll way down here. You can see on this div, we have this draggable property. So just use an HTML5 drag and drop. Of course, I'm not recommending that you should just go raw here, but um, great for this demo. On drag start, we uh, set some data transfer. This is all just DOM stuff uh, built into the browser. I say, hey, I'm adding a content type here. Um, and then some information about it. <clears throat> this is my ID and my title. Actually, I think I only need the ID, but whatever. Um, so when I start the drag, that is going to go uh, to the browser and it's going to set that data type. Like I can drag out here and save onto my desktop. Um, if it was like had a text content type then or an HTML, then it would dump it there as a file. Uh, but instead, I'm going to drag and drop on top of these. Um, so that's the one that's being dragged. And then I have on the list item above it some other drag events. So on drag over, so it's saying when you drag over this thing, if it includes the card content type, then uh, let's prevent default, stop propagation, because you can actually drop these onto like a new column. So like over here, I can drop onto a brand new column. But anyway, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, and then we measure the element size with the bounding client rect, uh, figure out its midpoint, and then we just set accept drop top or bottom. And then on drag leave, so when it drags out, we set accept drop back to none. Let's skip the on drop part. And then down here, using some tailwind classes, if accept drop is top, then we're going to do a border on the top of red and then transparent on the bottom. If the accept drop is bottom, we're gonna put a border on the bottom and then transparent on the top. If it's none or neither one of those, it's just transparent. So there's always a transparent border on here. And then that coupled with that state of the accept drop top or bottom, that's how we get these red lines in between these. Now let's look at the um, on drop event. And this is where Remix gets involved. Um, so we say, hey, I dropped, so don't say drop to anyone above me. Uh, get the data transfer. And then we check, do I have an ID and a title in there? Um, let's figure out the dropped order. So this part, this is just part of my abstraction, not super critical here. My data model is I store the order on each item. So I have a list of like five and the order will be zero, one, two, three, four, five. And then when I drop something, what I'm doing here is taking the midpoint of the siblings. So if I have one that's order of one and then another item that's order of two, and then I drop something in between one and two, I'm going to take those two orders and find the midpoint. So that would be one and a half. And then if I drop something in between one and one and a half, then the new order of the one that goes in the middle is going to be uh, 1.25, etc. Um, I'm using SQLite. I think it has 13 significant digits. So like I can drag and drop millions of times. I think it'll be fine. Um, uh, so this, this previous order, next order, these are props that are coming in from the parent. I can go right to it. <clears throat> and we can see, uh, let's see, there we go. We can see as I'm rendering it, I say, hey, what's your previous order? If I've got an item behind you, then it's that one's order. Otherwise, it's zero because you're the first. Um, next order is the one ahead of you, its order, right? So I'm just, I'm just passing in the, uh, oops. I'm just passing in as props 
the previous order. So now I can do this math and figure out what's the new order. It's the thing right in the middle. I create my little mutation here, my new order, what column ID am I, what's my ID, what's my title. And then, um, and then right here, this is just a normal remix submit that we saw before where we're posting. It's not a navigation, so we want it to create a use fetcher. Um, this fetcher key, I didn't want here yet, but it's there. <laughs> so we'll talk about it later. I just have fewer things to type in this video, I guess. Uh, yeah, so here's the fetcher key on that. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. And then after I submit, then set, a drop, set accept drop to none. So let's see what our UX is at the moment. We're just kind of getting the, the base thing working. I've got, this is draggable. I have some state as it drags over things to change the styles. And then I have a drop. So if I drop this in between these two, it's gonna figure out the order and we should see a submission with all that information. Hey, and there it is. We can see that down here we submitted order is two. Um, and now if I drop it in between these two, we can now see order is 0.625. So it's just figuring out that midpoint. But the UX here is kind of terrible because I come over here and then nothing happens when I drop and then all of a sudden things shift. So our goal here is to, and what this video is about, is how do we get that thing that right when I drop it, it shows up there and it disappears from the other one. And this is where you need to watch the previous video. So if you didn't watch Optimistic Ad yet before this, please stop, go watch it. Uh, but I will review very briefly how this works. So this is the whole board component uh, that has everything, all of the columns, all of the items. And we have a map of items and then we go and we get the pending items from use fetchers. We filter out the ones, just the ones that we want, uh, the ones that have intent of create item, and then we map them into something that we can render. And then we take uh, these pending items and we push them into this item set. And then after that, uh, we add each item to its column. So this is important that, um, sorry, you really should watch the other video. Uh, now I'm starting to explain it all. But this is a really critical part. The loader data coming back is just the columns and the items in separate lists. And then what we're doing here is we're constructing that relationship of saying, okay, these items are part of this list. These items are part of this uh, column. Um, so these, uh, the, the code right now just handles optimistic add. So when I hit enter, it's just right there immediately. So the trick here is it's the same list of items, right? So I just need to get uh, these pending items, I just need to include the ones that are moving too. So that's actually a really quick little bit of code here. I've got another intent you can see right here. Intent is move item right there. And so now I've got both the ones that I'm adding and the ones that I'm moving inside of this uh, use pending items list. Now, the second thing I need to change, if you watched the last video, is I really don't need to check here when I'm iterating all of my pending items. Um, I'm first checking, oh, do my, do my real items from the database, that's these ones, do my real items from the database, do they already contain this pending one? I actually don't care about that because, yeah, it already contains it. I'm, I'm updating this, right? So it seemed important with, uh, when it was optimistic ad, but really there's no harm in just saying, just shove it in there. Whether it's new or it already existed, um, I'm putting it in there and uh, this, this item on my pending item, note that we're getting its column ID from the fetcher. So that's an important part here. If we go back over to the card, we can see that this mutation, for an item mutation, I'm including the column ID. So when I create a brand new one, it's got the column ID of whatever one I'm adding it to. And then when I'm dropping it, this is my on drop, right? On drop, whose column ID is this? Well, this is the prop that came into the one that I'm dropping onto. So it's different than the one that, it, that already existed. So as long as I have all of that information in there, if I come back 
to my column. Oops, no, my board, sorry. Um, so this is my use pending items. As long as both my optimistic ads and these drag and drop contain the same data in them, what's your column ID, what's your title, what's your ID, what's your order, everything I need to render, then I can just put them in the same group of pending items and then um, grab them from the hook. And then down here, as I cruise over um, all of my pending items, I just set them in here. And then here is that last bit of code, again, from the last video, where we create the relationship of saying, all right, these items belong to this board. When I get to this loop, I didn't, I didn't have to change this loop because uh, my, my item in this map gets overridden. So like the one that already existed in this database, I override it with whatever is coming from the pending items. And so now it's got a new column ID on it and a new order. So very, very, very minimal change from what I already had. Uh, I just had to add this one line here to say, hey, I want to include the moving items. Uh, something you didn't see me do. I got to make sure that all of the all of the data in this form data, this fetcher, is the same for add and uh, move. And so now I can put them together, and then I just quit, double checking like, oh, does do my items have this one? Nah, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to overwrite it, and that's it. So now when I come over here and drop this, it drops in there immediately. Even like I could drop all the way down to slow 3G and it just shows up right away and it falls out of the other one. I'm not, I'm not removing from one and adding to another. I'm simply saying what is pending. All right, let's build up a set of items for that. Um, merge it with the existing ones and then set the relationship between columns and items. And it's really fun. Uh, are you ready for this? We're just going to go nuts. <laughs> I can even move this one all around. All right, so this gets pretty important. Notice over here that we've got a couple canceled fetches. What is that all about? So this one, if I grab this one here and then I move it right back, notice we get a cancel. So this is where fetcher keys come in. Um, and this is what I was saying. I, I wanted to have a bug first, but oh well. We don't have the bug. <laughs> so you can, when you submit with Remix Submit, and you say Navigate Fault, it's going to create a fetcher. And you can add a fetcher key on this. And you can say, all right, here's its card, colon, and then the ID of that card. Um, notice up here, or no, I don't have any words. Um, so when it submits once with that key, if we interrupt that submission and submit again with the same key, Remix will go, oh, this is, this is the same fetcher. I'm going to abort that one because that's not what we want to do anymore, and I'm going to do something else. So just a phenomenal UX. I can add stuff. I can grab things and move them around, and I can just have a bunch of stuff going on back there in the network just chugging away, doing whatever it needs to do as I do all of this. Oh, grabbed the wrong one. That's the one. <laughs> so much fun. Just over here just doing its thing. I think Remix is pretty cool.